so today in this video we are going to discuss about the bryophytes so in the previous video we will be in, in remaining videos we are going to cover the remaining part of the plant kingdom so in this video we are going to deal about the bryophytes so if you are new please like share subscribe and i'm ujwala and your if you and your uh, seeing the channel with me ujwala okay now let's get into the video this today we are going to talk about bryophytes so in um, bryophytes include very uh, the various mosses and liverworts so in this line we are seeing that the bryophyte are mainly composed of mosses and liverworts so bryophytes lo manam main ga mosses ni bryophytes ni chustamu these are the classifications of bryophytes fine so these are mainly grown in the moist shady areas which are present in the hills so manam bryophytes anangane we will be seeing them mostly in the hilly areas and avi um, rocks degger ku untai anamata without growing too much height rock oku atukkon untai this bryophytes they are found in the moist shady areas fine enough here there are some pictures given in the ncrt so idi vachese it is a liver rot anamata but these are this is the moss okay liver rot such so example vachese markensia this markensia this is the male markensia this is the female markensia how i am distinguishing by the presence of archegonia which are male gametes and anthridium which are female gametes okay male gametes and female gametes these two are present on the uh, um, sporophytes and this is attached with the gametophyte right now uh, here when you see down this is the funeria which is a moss these are uh, liverworts male and female liverwort here you can see the funeria which is mosses and uh, gametophyte and sporophyte both are present on the same plant first these leafy structure is gametophyte and this capsules seta these are uh, sporophyte okay these are connected by the rhizoids uh, which are down uh, which may be unicellular or multicellular this is main axis this is foot okay rhizoids plus main axis together we will call it, call it as foot now here sphagnum this picture is known as sphagnum it is also a moss okay now let's move on to the ncrt lines now bryophytes are also known as amphibians of plant kingdom because they live both on land and water in water the purpose is because these plants can live on land on soil but depend on water so on land they usually depend on they, they live on land but they depend for water for the sexual reproduction okay mamulu ante land pain untai water enduku kavalante for the sexual reproduction ante male gametes female gametes ki reach kavalante they require a medium known as water okay for water is very crucial for the sexual reproduction they usually occur in damp humid and shady localities these bryophytes are mainly found in the damp wet areas humid but some particular temperature along with the moisture should be available and shady areas the sun should not direct to be on these plants okay shady localities they play very important role in the succession of bare rocks so bare rock succession to soil in the sense they convert the rocks into soil they decompose the rocks to soil and the body of bryophytes is more distinguished than algae so algae body is thalloid right it is not distinguished into root stem leaf but here it is somewhat distinguished than algae the thallus is like uh, like a prostate and erect so prostate and erect in the sense it may be either uh, stick to the base or somewhat uh, away from the base so imagine that this is a rock it may either stick to the rock or it may either grow somewhat height from the rock okay now uh, are attached to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids so for that i i'll show you an example here these two these all are bryophytes right here the rhizoids are there which are directly attached to the structure structure substratum right and uh, here this is directly attached to the rock but here it is present somewhat height right these rhizoids these are present at somewhat height of the plant so some height is given to the plant but here these are stick to the substratum okay now when we um, substratum and this uh, by unicellular multicellular rhizoids the rhizoids may be either multicellular or unicellular they lack true root stem or leaves true stems undavu leaves undavu and also stem kuda undadu but root like this root like stem like and leaf like structures are present root like structure is known as rhizoid which we know stem like structure is known as calloid which you need to remember leaf like structure is known as phylloid okay root like structure rhizoid stem like like structure calloid and leaf like structure is known as a, a phylloid okay now when we talk about um, this the um, main plant body of the bryophytes is haploid obviously main plant dominant stage is a gametophyte right gametophyte is a haploid now it produces gametes hence it is known as gametophyte gametophyte is haploid in condition the sex organs in bryophytes are multicellular are anthridium and are Archegonia are multicellular, and those are and uh, the 
Male sex organ is known as anthridium, which I have already told you. The anthridium is biflagellated. Two flagella are present for the anthridium, and these uh, uh, produce anthrocytes. The male sex organ is archegonia. It is flask shaped. In the bryophytes, the female um, sex organ, archegonia, it is flask shaped and produce single egg. Many anthrocytes are produced, but only single egg is produced within the archegonia. The anthrocytes are released into the water and they come in contact with the archegonium. The anthrocyte fuse with the egg to produce zygote. The zygotes uh, uh, do not undergo reduction division immediately. So here in the bryophytes, the zygote is, is not going to uh, undergo reduction division di uh, immediately and produce spores. The intermediate stage is there. The, the produced multicellular uh, body known as sporophyte. Sporophyte is 2N condition which we know deployed. The sporophyte is not free living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte and derives nutrition from it. From it. Here dependent sporophyte is seen in bryophytes. Sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte in deriving the nutrition. Fine. Some cells of the sporophyte undergo reduction division meiosis. Only few cells. Some cells. Only few cells of the sporophyte they undergo reduction division and derive the nutrition and these some cells are uh, uh, meiosis. I'm sorry. They undergo the reduction division meiosis to produce haploid spores. So then this sporophyte only few cells are going to undergo the reduction meiosis division to or, in order to produce the spores okay very good now and these spores germinate to produce gametophyte and, and, and in turn this produce gametophyte in the sense sporophyte it produces spores in these spores germinate to form gametophyte and this gametophyte it co contains both male and female male is known as Anthridium and female archegonia. Anthridium produces androzoids. Archegonia egg. Anthridium goes and fuses with the egg and forms zygote after fertilization. After fertilization, it forms a zygote. Zygote undergoes a, a meiosis and forms a embryo. And embryo in turn develops into sporophyte okay this is the life cycle here the spore and sporophyte the sporophytic stage is very less than gametophytic stage so the gamete dominant dominant stage is a gametophyte okay which is gametophyte is haploid in condition fine understood this okay enough this zygote does not undergo the reduction division immediately these spores uh, produce a multicellular body called as sporophyte which is two in in condition very fine where we are yeah the sporophyte is not free living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte. So food and other nutrition are derived by the sporophyte uh, from gametophyte and uh, nutrition is derived obviously. Some cells of the spore, they, uh, they undergo reduction division and they produce spores. These spores germinate to from the, form the gametophyte which we have seen in just now. Now, bryophytes in general have little economic importance but great ecological importance. So this thing you need to remember. Ecological importance is very high whereas economical importance is very low okay ecological importance is very high but economical importance is very low this thing you need to remember enough the bryophytes, bryophytes in general have a little economical important but some mosses provide only few mosses provide a food for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals herbaceous mammals birds and other animals for them food is provided by mosses enough Spe species of speg uh, spegnum for sphagnum, it is a type of moss, uh, provides peat. Sphagnum provides peat. Uh, peat. They have lo these have, been, uh, have long been used as the fuel and packaging material for transshipment of living material because they have the uh, capacity to hold water. And this property is known as uh, hydrocolloid. Okay. Now, mosses along with lichens are the first organisms to colonize rocks. In the sense, they decompose the rocks and produce uh, the soil which is helpful for the growth for the higher animals. Hi I'm sorry, higher plants. And hence, uh, are having a great ecological um, importance. I have I have already written ecological importance is high, whereas economical importance is very low. Now, they decompose rocks and make the substratum suitable for the growth of what? For the growth of higher plants. Since mosses form dense mats of soil, mosses form dense mats of soil that reduce the impact of rainfall. In a sense, erosion is decreased and prevents soil erosion. Bryophytes are divided into liver moths and mosses. So the classification which we have start we have learned at a starting only which is uh, bryophytes are divided into mosses and liver moths. Now first we will be looking at the mosses, water mosses and everything. Okay. Now 
liver warts the liver warts grow usually in mo moist shady habitats moist in the sense wet regions shady in the sense where the sunlight concentration is less so liver warts usually grow in the moist and shady locations such as banks streams and uh, banks in the sense uh, li uh, river bank river uh, where there is uh, some soil present uh, beside the river okay river banks streams marshy grounds damp soils bark of trees and deep in the woods the plant body of liverwort is talloid so talloid body of the liverwort example is marchensia marchensia body is talloid and uh, it is a uh, liverwort example is marchensia the talus is dorsi ventrally dorsi ventrally flattened the talloid is present in the marchensia which is closely oppressed oppressed in the sense closely suppressed to, to the substratum or rock okay these are closely uh, uh, um, oppressed to the substrate the leaf me leafy members have tiny leaf up and edges in the two rows of stem like structures few have uh, leaves but only few members but mostly they are thalloid example marchensia dorsi ventrally oppressed substratum is present as like now when we, it comes to reproduction 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 is actually done by a sexual reproduction in liver warts takes place by fragmentation of thalli or by formation of specialized structures known as gemme uh, gemme are green multicellular asexual buds these are green these are multicellular uh, many cells are present and this is uh, asexual buds which develop into small receptacles called as gemme cups located on the tally the gemme be become um, detached from the parent body and germinate to form new individual these gemma are they detached from the parent body and they grow into the another fully developed uh, liver what okay individual in fully developed individual so asexual reproduction is by uh, reproduction is usually done by two types asexual and sexual okay in asexual reproduction uh, we are again seeing two types which are fragmentation and uh, gemma cup formation okay gemma fragmentation is by tally is going to divide into fragments and again it will be developing into individual new individual okay now when it comes to gemma cups this gemma comes detached from the main parent body and they develop into another fully developed individual which we have seen and uh, that's about the asexual reproduction they develop into full individual okay individual fine now sexual reproduction when we see the sexual reproduction in the here during sexual reproduction male and female sex organs organs we are talking about male and female sex organs okay male and female sex organs are produced on either on the same or different plant different tally so the organ sex organs may either be present on the same uh, tally or on the different tally so uh, um, tally of the sporophyte is differentiated uh, the sporophyte is basically it means the diploid stage uh, sporophyte is di differentiated it is divided into foot seta and capsule after meiosis after reduction division spores are produced within the capsule very important it means reduction division in the uh, this uh, uh, liver warts is done inside the capsule the spores germinate to give free living gametophyte which is the dominant stage of uh, what bryophytes or okay bryophytes now um, when we see at this uh, only example present till now in the liver warts is uh, we are only seeing about the uh, mark and shear right now i want to tell you that the body of uh, this liver warts which you can see here it is divided into foot seta and capsule here you can see though this is an example of a uh, moss uh, this liver warts will also be in the same kind but this is not a you know particular example of the liver wart but the, the body is divided in this kind foot seta and capsule just it's an example okay now when we look about uh, through the mosses we'll be seeing exam mo now we will be looking into the mosses the predominant stage of the life cycle of moss is gametophyte which we know and consists of two stages in the mosses when we look at the moss the moss mosses are divided into two types which are a uh, protonema stage is there and also leafy and that stage is known as leafy stage okay two stages protonema leafy stage the two stages first stage is protonema stage develops directly from the spore so protonema stage this uh, develops these are two stages are what these two stages are gametophytic stages okay gametophytic stages these two are gametophytic stages the predominant stage of life cycle of moss is gametophyte this gametophytic stage in turn consists of two stages which are which are protonema uh, stage which de this uh, de um, develops 
directly from the spores spores nunchi directly develop aithe protonema stage and uh, it is creepy creepy green branched protonema is branched okay it is branched protonema is branched and uh, frequently filamentous in filamentous stage is seen in the protonema and second stage is leafy stage develops from secondary protonema it is protonema it is it develops from directly spore from spore but leafy stage it develops from develops from secondary protonema okay from secondary protonema this leafy stage is going to be developed and develops from secondary pro as a lateral bud here from spore it is going to develop but here it is going to develop from the lateral bud they um, they consist upright slender axis bearing spirally arranged leaves upright axis so this uh, gametophyte is going to uh, be in this gametophyte we are going to see the spirally arranged leaves and for that i'm going to show you an example here in this you are going to see the spirally arranged leaves in this mosses right this is the gametophyte okay now we are talking about gametophyte only leafy stage now here uh, spirally arranged i hope you are able to see the jati lines spirally arranged leaves are present they are attached to the soil through multicellular and branched rhizoids very very important in mosses in a mosses these gametophyte is going to be attached to the soil through multicellular branched rhizoids rhizoids are branched and they are multicellular this stage uh this stage bears sex organs so this stage is going to bear the sex organs which stage leafy stage is going to bear the sex organs now vegetative reproduction now when we talk about the reproduction in the mosses reproduction is again of two types so the re uh, vegetative reproduction in mosses is by fragmentation and budding in a secondary protonema so in a sexual reproduction sexes so first we are going to see about vegetative reproduction so vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation or budding in a secondary protonema okay in a secondary protonema we are going to see the vegetative reproduction in budding and fragmentation in secondary protonema okay this comes under the vegetative reproduction next in asexual reproduction the sex organs anthridium and archegonia are produced at the apex tip okay here we are going to be seeing them at the tip okay at the tip at the tip um of the leafy shoot Uh, after fertilization zygote zygote develops into the sporophyte obviously we know it consisting of foot seta capsule so this is the foot this is the seta and this is the capsule fine and uh, mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersion the spore dispersion is having very lengthy process in this uh, uh, mosses and the capsule contains spores obviously we know the capsule contains spores in both the liverworts and mosses okay now these spore formed in liverworts uh, spores are formed in uh, what i'm saying spores are formed by the mosses okay we know obviously after reduction division we will be seeing the formation of spores the mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersion okay they have very lengthy process uh, in order to disperse the spores common examples of uh, the mosses of funaria polytrichum and sphagnum sphagnum is used for peat okay peat and also hydrocolite now how to memorize the examples how to memorize the examples of bryophytes these many are there right trick one trick i want to tell you is um trick is trick me uh, you wrote it down in your ncert okay mary first place aya second nahi okay this is the trick to remember all the examples of bryophytes okay mera mary in the sense mark and shia what in what mark and shia comes under liverworts or mosses it comes under liverworts only example of liverworts is mark and shia remember it okay for first funaria place polytrichum aya you leave it of aya second sphagnum okay aya nahi also you leave it of only konni consider cheyala anni consider cheyavadu meri first place aya second nahi meri mark and shia first funaria place polytrichum aya second sphagnum nahi okay this is the trick you need to remember this line and for this every bryophyte you will be remembering this and uh, one thing which is very important to remember is here the uh, uh, this uh, 
whatever the rhizoids are there here these are multicellular and branch rhizoids this is very important in the mosses which you need to remember okay i hope the concept is clear that's about the bryophytes we are done with the bryophytes see you next video with another important concept until then stay tuned boy like share subscribe bye